Hey everyone, welcome to TVI Tips from Amanda. I am in the process of working on some tips for new TVIs, but before I can make that video, I promised one about a review on a paraeducator's handbook for working with students with visual impairments, which is the second edition from the Texas School for the Blind and Visually Impaired. So um, here we are. I'm gonna kind of power through this a little quickly. Before I say anything, I think it's a great resource and everybody should buy one, especially if they have paraeducators that are working with their paraprofessionals. So here's what it looks like. Um, again, this is the second edition. It's definitely a much needed update. The previous one uh, was pretty out of date considering it's been a long time since it had been published. So I wanna talk about the pros for this handbook. It's super affordable, it's $30 for the base um, cost, but when with shipping and handling for just one book, it's $34.50. It's not an expensive uh, addition to your resources that you're providing your paraprofessional with. Inside, it has tons of resources. It has a lot of great examples um, to kind of show how the paraprofessional may work with students, and then if, the paraprofessional or the team wants to go um, and look up other resources, the back has an index um, or an appendix with a lot of different options and direct. it gives you direct information for how to find more information. It has a great list of explanation for the roles and responsibilities of different teachers that might work with the student and then the different related service providers that may also work with the student. It has definitions for common eye conditions and for things like being blind, what is low vision, uh, what is the expanded core, and all of those sorts of things. I think that's wonderful to have it all in one place. And then it really goes super in depth into the expanded core curriculum. And um, as TVIs, we all know that the ECC is very important for making sure our students are independent when they leave the school setting and we need to work on those throughout the student's career so it's a great justification and explanation for why we're working on those sorts of things with our students. So I'm going to show you now the table of contents and I hope this is okay with the Texas School for the Blind and Visually Impaired but rather than me just yapping away I wanted to kind of show everybody what's inside this book. It, the first chapter is uh, the overview of what the role might be. The second chapter is social interaction and self-determination skills, which are some of the most important things. And one thing the authors um, say over and over and over in this book is that the paraprofessional needs to encourage independence and to not be someone who's hovering over top of the individual nonstop. And it talks about different ways that the paraprofessional can encourage independence with social interaction and self-determination skills. It has a lot of information from pages 29 to 49 on students with visual and multiple impairments. I know that we might have um, paraprofessionals who are in those classrooms with some of our students who are uh, visually impaired and multiply disabled, but they're going to have other, they might not be assigned specifically to specifically to just our students so it's really important that those other paraprofessionals who are um, in the assigned to a classroom as a whole are familiar with how they can encourage independence encourage sensory efficiency skills um, communication movement behavior those sorts of things with our students then we move on to chapter four which is independent living skills uh, another part of the expanded core curriculum then there's orientation mobility skills I think of all the chapters in this book, the O&M section is the most robust, even though it's only 17 pages long. It talks about O&M, it looks at some AMDs, it looks at the long cane, it looks at protective techniques and human guides and has pictures and examples and is very clear and easy for a paraprofessional to understand. And they would still need support from an O&M specialist, but it's a great foundation for a paraprofessional who's just learning about those areas and is going to need to reinforce those skills with our students. And chapter six is assistive technology. I think one of the struggles the authors had here is how to include as much information as possible without being overwhelming and um, having the information be relevant. And we all know that AT is constantly changing and evolving. And I think the authors did a wonderful job um, just explaining in general what assistive technology is and then what types might be available for our students knowing that things are going to change over time. So um, I love their AT section. I wish it was more robust, but I understand why they didn't include more. Chapter 7 is on adapting learning materials. Again, that field 
or that area of what we do is constantly changing as new technology is available to produce adaptive materials. So it has um, a very basic overall um, section of what is adapting materials, which ones might you adapt, why is it important, why can't we just do everything auditorily, and then some equip uh, equipment and suggestions for how to do it. Again, this is an area that I think our paraprofessionals are working on a lot more than the ECC sometimes because many of our paras move into roles where they're providing adapted materials instead of directly working with the student and I really wish this section had been more robust but I understand why it couldn't be at the same time. And then the last chapter is on the expanded core curriculum just as general. It's a very brief overview. Again it has the appendices where it um, 10 pages of resources to supplement the book and then finally the index in case someone's looking for a topic in, in particular. So like I said, I love the paraeducators handbook. It's a wonderful addition to the packets that I already am going to be giving paraprofessionals that I already give. So I'm adding that now in to give my paraprofessionals that I work with. Um, but there are some things that I wish it had. And I'm going to show you part of the preface right here. It says um, something, 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 something. They should also establish and specify clearly guidelines for the role of the paraeducator with that individual student. And it talks about the need to establish well-defined roles and responsibilities, inclusion of the paraprofessional in team meetings, adequate training, adequate time allotted to prepare materials, technology training, participation in documenting IEP objectives and goals, um, organizing instructional materials, and then how to have organized and consistent communication between team members. And if you've watched my other videos on paraprofessionals, you know that I say the same things and I love that it's written down here so it's not just me saying that, but what I wish they had was some sort of way to justify, help a team justify needing a paraprofessional because some of our students are gonna need one and some of our students aren't going to need one. I wish there, look at underline my paraprofessionals because I can't spell, ha ha. Um, I wish it had some guidance for how teams should um, decide what roles the paraprofessional should should have for each student because not every paraprofessional is going to same this play the same role for um, a student as they would for a different student. And as paraprofessionals move between students, they're going to have to have different roles. And it would be nice if there was a way that they that um, uh, Cyril Miller and Deborah Sewell had included in the book for how how to justify and decide what those should be. And then strategies and tips for training a paraprofessional. We can give the information all we want to them, but they're still going to need some some specific um, training and, and information from their TVI. I, I wish it had some strategies and tips for the TVIs there. Again, ways to monitor progress to help everybody stay accountable, the team, the paraprofessional, the TVI, the student, to uh, be accountable in the entire process of having a paraprofessional. And then some justification for competitive pay would be really nice. I know that's something that a lot of the teams that I work with are uh, struggling with. We have these paraprofessionals and we spend so much time getting them their braille certification and their spe uh, specialized training in the areas of working with students who are blind and visually impaired. And then we're still paying them measly wages that are similar to other paraprofessionals who might be working and maybe they're just copying papers all day and it's it can be hard for a paraprofessional to want to stay in that role of uh, doing a lot of work because it is a lot of work and it can be hard work when they know that they could be spending their time just sitting at a copier all day and make the same amount of money. So those are just the five things I wish that were in the book that aren't um, but I understand why they aren't in the book because it's a hundred and some pages um, and there's only so much you can do and put in one book at a time. So like I said, wish there were some things, but it's still a wonderful, wonderful book. I'm gonna be giving it to all my paraprofessionals as I um, work with them and as I get new ones, I'm gonna include that in their packet of information for training. So I hope everyone goes out and buys it. It's a fabulous, fabulous, fabulous book. And I hope you all have a great day.